Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton, I'm at CES 2015 and I'm on the booth of Ford and I'm joined by Eric Wingfield. Eric, thanks for talking to me. We're right here in front of the smart mobility thing. For you guys, smart mobility is about a lot more than cars. I listened to your president and CEO do the keynote. A lot of talk there about the different projects, the different challenges you've got in that area and kind of how there's an opportunity there to make some changes for the better, which perhaps we don't associate with automotive giants. So tell me how that all works. Tell me what that whole mobility thing means. Well, we're very excited as a mobility company. We think of ourselves as having a role in the choice of uh, people in moving about in their daily lives. And we think that's a very exciting frame to think about mobility. And as we looked at the, as the CEO mentioned in his presentation, the, the choice, or rather the urban environment, the growing information connectivity mm. that we're all experiencing, and of course the pressures that come along with it, such as congestion, and, and, um, and then the great opportunity around consumer preference, yeah. we started thinking about, if we looked at that through a, a, a lens of what is mobility and what is, what is the interest mm. in, in individuals in moving around, what could we think of as near, mid, and long-term sort of strategies to grow into uh, a view for Ford uh, to have a valuable relationship in society and with customers. And then in 2014 and, uh, and 2015, we began to look at how could we set concrete experiments mm. that would begin to test against these relative to our strengths, relative to what we think are interesting mobility questions, mm. and then uh, relative to setting an open dialogue. And so these experiments are very much yeah getting to learn that yeah, yeah. and I, I live in London where congestion is a big issue in fact we have to pay for congestion right um, I I have a car but my my kids drive it and they don't live in London uh, so I don't see much of that and I actually really enjoy using public transport we have some nice car share options there's all kinds of stuff going on and I, I know you've got experiments happening in Mumbai in Australia in Asia where urbanization is causing these challenges what's kind of the standout lesson that you've learned in 2014 from these from these experiments I think the thing that stands out for me is that you know this is a really big playground mm. so to speak and that mobility has so many interesting tales that you can really you can really uh, rethink the way you, you engage in that mm. so being inside of a car company and very excited about the products that we have you you know, you get to that concrete connection to uh, the vehicles and what that means. But as we started to look at mobility and as we think of it like this, the, the piece that stands out for me is that uh, it's such a compelling proposition mm. to be engaged in mobility. It's, it's so exciting to uh, think about local conditions and, and globally common things that it's, uh, it's very gratifying to be part of it. Yeah, and it's nice yeah. to be able to reach out to all those those creative minds, those individual people that know what's going on in their own geography, know what the challenge is, and are coming up with all kinds of different solutions to do that. One of the one of the key things people are talking about here is Internet of Things, Internet of Car, whatever. But for me, it feels like the whole connectivity is a bit of a given now. Everything is going to be connected. It's more about what you do with it, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. And 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 I think as you see from within these challenges, when we when you uh, mentioned. You know, how do we engage in a global discussion? The challenges were very much about setting out, uh, here's a topic, that, um, and we'll give you a concrete example of a place where it happens. Um, and then we want to hear what you think is an interesting uh, investment. And so the orange area that you see right here is very much about people that developed apps um, and how they think of what an interesting mobility issue is. And in, in that particular case, as they as they develop those solutions, um, it's just a, a great opportunity to engage in the creativity that's reinventing or shapes the future much more concretely than than people see in their daily lives. Where you might hear about intelligent transportation systems, very good, uh, infrastructure intensive. Uh, but along the way, people are also making companies that grow into transformative engagements. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the other thing I, I think is a uh, trend certainly we're seeing in, in London and other cities is this whole idea of, of vehicle sharing. The, the ownership of vehicles has become challenged in some way. It's not as aspirational for kids as it was when perhaps you and I were 18 and we were thinking about our first car. What changes, what, those changes, what does that mean to Ford? 
Uh, well, so we're seeing those trends show up in a number of different ways. So in, in places like London or, or uh, in cities like in the United States, like San Francisco and New York, well, we, we definitely see a change in the uh, demographic of choosing to drive. But in other places of the world, we're seeing a, a desire, a pent-up desire to to engage in personal mobility through vehicle ownership. Right. And in the case, we think there's a fit in both places for the shared vehicle, and so um, use um, uh, user uh, sharing or user, um, if I, pardon me, I'm looking user for a specific ship. user ship. User ship, yeah, thank you. User ship models are very much about how do how is that delivered, yeah. and so we have some of these user ship models that are specifically around sharing, and they would be fleet based, and then we have some that are specifically around individual ownership, and how sharing can be an opportunity to um, make the vehicle available within your own small community, yeah. and we think that that is going to be relevant both in terms of what goes into the vehicles. Um, as well as um, uh, the number of people that have a vehicle yeah. made accessible to them for personal mobility. Yeah. And there's been a, quite a bit of discussion about what impact that has for, uh, for the auto manufacturers. And from our work, from uh, what we see here, I certainly see good things. It's, yeah. it's the, the opportunity to make uh, mobility available yeah. is yeah. just really exciting. So to have this smart mobility, we need to have smart, a smart environment, we need to have smart cities. Do you see governments, both regional, national governments, and kind of the international community getting behind that idea, making these cities connected, making the infrastructure open, available to you to, to be able to have this smart interaction? There are, so we're fortunate to have, at, at, you can still have at the individual and the grassroots level, you can still have that, um, that opportunity, but we are seeing uh, city governments and state governments, national governments around the world who are interested in participating at that level as well. And one one uh, way that, for instance, we see it out of London or San Francisco is in the open data initiatives, right. where publicly available data that is, in a sense, gathered on behalf of the public by governments meant to serve the public are turning that into a valuable asset for the community to make it available to them. Yeah. And so we see a very strong growth around the world in cities to participate in, um, in that kind of environment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well Eric, thanks very much for your time. Pleasure to talk to you and we'll explore some of these projects and we'll talk again soon. Thank you. Great. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.